Uh, the strategies I think to support uh, you know current businesses are just to maintain uh, you know for Columbia is to maintain that philosophy of shopping local. Um, you know Columbia is already really strong in that aspect. They support a lot of local businesses, and in doing that, all the money that uh, is obtained from that type of commerce gets to stay here in our local economy, and then that's what keeps us flourishing. As far as attracting new businesses go, um, <clears throat> that's that's a that's a touchy subject because you know we want businesses to come to Columbia that want to be in Columbia, that want to be a part of this community, that want to take advantage of our uh, geographic um, you know area uh, where we're located centrally in the United States, but also want to take advantage of you know having their families be a part of the Columbia community and then themselves be invested in our community. So. Uh, you know, I don't know if we need to go out and be uh, go out and offer a bunch of you know tax subsidies for those companies. I understand it's a part of the the game in attracting large companies, and from time to time it's worth it. But uh, you know, I think we just need to attract businesses that want to be here. Uh, my thoughts on that that's very concerning. Uh, the, the police officers are already in a very high stress job. So to find out the fact that they have a, a low level of confidence in their leadership uh, states that they're, you know, that speaks to the fact that there are problems within the uh, department. I think that uh, some of the ways that they can remedy that are by having, uh, you know, more of a voice from the subordinates to the top and uh, more of an outlet for them to be able to communicate those uh, concerns that they have. Um, overall, Columbia. Um, we don't we don't have a rampant amount of crime. Unfortunately, the uh, you know it kind of goes on streaks. Like we hear about uh, a lot of shootings, and they comes from a lot of you know immature kids that don't have an outlet. Uh, in the second ward, in particular, larceny is on the rise, and that's very concerning to me. And I've already detailed a, a plan that I think uh, the law enforcement can use to backtrack, uh, you know, where the where the criminals live and where they're coming from, and be able to monitor those areas more closely instead of spreading the law enforcement around to all the areas where there's a uh, not a non-high concentration of criminal activity, uh, you know, find out where they are and then monitor them in their own homes. Um, thank you for asking a budgeting question. That's what I consider to be my expertise as a, a business owner and auditor. I have a vast amount of experience in that, and that's really what I bring the most to the table. Uh, as far as, you know, what I can do, looking through the budget, I don't really think that we need to go increasing taxes. I think what we can do is find a lot of areas within uh, the current budget to find areas to cut. Um, you, know, you look at uh, you know the parks program and golf courses and the different like city-owned businesses that are operating at a you know about, about a seven hundred thousand dollar loss every year, and those particular city-owned businesses are competing against private businesses. So I think they need to uh, rearrange the fee structure there to where those are break even, and then from there that money that's saved can be used to you know support you know local infrastructure and safety. Um, other areas like our, uh, you know, our budget right now, we're spending uh, 24 million on uh, uh, supplies and uh, things of that nature. And in businesses across America, that that budget line is being cut. But in Columbia, we experienced an 11 percent increase. So we're experiencing double-digit percentage increases when other businesses are able to, uh, uh, you know, cut that. So I think you know we can find vast amounts of areas within the city to, uh, you know, uh, cut. Um, the city can do a lot of things to uh, promote responsible growth. One is to like have a top-down attitude that we don't need to just go out there and grow. Just what it, like you know, wherever we can grow, let's just grow. I think we, as a community, we're already a really solid community. We don't need to add a lot. So when we're going to be adding uh, pieces to our community, we want to make sure that we're adding like you know the top, like you know, like top 10% companies or the top 10% entities. You know, because Columbia is already one of the best places to live in America. So when we're talking about adding, I don't think we need to just go full board and offer tax incentives to every single business that wants to come here. Just growing for the sake of growth. You know, we have a lot of precious resources here. We have a great school system. So the, the companies and the businesses that we add to our community, they need to be top tier entities. Um, so I think that, that needs to be the philosophical growth pattern. And then from there, uh, you know, there's a lot of logistics as far as um, you know, how we grow, where we grow, and uh, uh, those fall on like the Plain Zone Commission, which I think that uh, we have a good good uh, system in place for how that's done right now. Well, affordable housing is important, uh, you know, to a lot of people. Uh, 
it is one of those programs that can be abused if not monitored uh, very closely. And the statistical data, uh, you know, the empirical data that's out there, the studies done by uh, you know the experts show that you know, uh, providing types of affordable houses doesn't really have that uh, that good of an impact on community. It's sometimes it's a necessity for you know people that are you know, disabled and uh, you know uh, have a tough time finding their their way to. Uh, work and to pay their bills, but uh, a lot of times that the uh, system of affordable housing is opened up and can be taken advantage of. So I think maybe a different approach and even a different name to uh, what it is would be the way to take it if I would go and do that. Uh, if elected, my first priority is going to be to get in there and uh, do the budgeting. You know, that's, that's one of the most important things that the City Council does. That sets the plate for success and it can also set the city up for failure. Uh, you know, my, managing finances is one of the most important things uh, to get done. So uh, what I'm going to do is go through, again, look at the budget. I'm going to ask the appropriate questions to, to figure out where we can cut, uh, you know, cut funds without sacrificing city service, you know, where we can eliminate the waste and trim the fat. Uh, 